Hey everyone, happy Thursday, May 23rd. It's about 11.45 on the West Coast and it's time for another market updates. Uh, going back to the last couple weeks, we had a nice little rally. Uh, things stalled a little bit this week, so let's take a closer look about uh, why that happened. Uh, first thing we got a couple days ago, we got April's existing home sales. So these are existing homes, not new sales, homes that are already built. Uh, that, uh, you know, close in April and that came in at negative 1.9% month over month and a negative 1.9% uh, year over year. Uh, so taking a closer look at this again, you know, down negative 1.9%, uh, the previous was revised a little bit lower, a 4.22 to 4.199. So it was actually only down about 1.2% when you consider those negative revisions. Uh, the median home price, uh, is up, uh, to 407,000, uh, uh, a little over 407,000. So that's up 3.7% month over month, 5.7% uh, year over year. Again, that has to do with, um, you know, uh, you know, a big part of that is the California market, especially million dollar homes and above has has gone you know has improved has, has has kind of recovered from when it was down a little bit so you know the way the medium home price works is the mix of homes that were sold in april so if there's more expensive homes being sold that's why you would see you know a big jump like that like 3.7 percent uh inventory jumped quite a bit too uh, up nine percent month over month to 1.2 million units remember not too long ago we were down in like the 700 to 800,000 range so good to see that there's more uh, inventory in the market for you know people looking to buy for realtors looking to sell um, so that's up to about a 3.5 month supply. Uh, keep in mind a normal market is about 4.6 months. So we're still, you know, erring on the side of, you know, having too little inventory, but it's creeping up. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, and really interesting, the days on market, even though we got a lot more inventory, you know, this last month, the days on market dropped from 33 to 26. And that tends to happen in spring selling season. People, people are out there, they see a house, they're buying it. It's going quick. So that's something to keep in mind if you're in the market as well. Uh, sold over list price dropped a little bit from 29% to 27. Uh, first time home buyers went up a little bit to 33%. Cash buyers stayed at 28%. And investors went up to 16%. So the more investors are buying, the less, you know, you or I could buy. So, um, you know, we got to keep it on that one too. Uh, next thing we got uh, was April new home sales. So these people signing contracts to buy, you know, homes are being built, a uh, new construction in the month of April. They came in at negative 4.7 month over month and negative 7.7 uh, year over year. So those are dropping. Um, I know my builder friends aren't happy with that. So um, they also made a revision uh, to the previous month. So it's actually would be a negative 8.5% mo uh, month over month without the revision. Uh, a medium home price is down a little bit month over month. But again, that depends on the mix of homes that are being built by the builders and still up 3.9% year over year. Just always keep in mind when you hear median, whether it's new homes, uh, existing homes, things like that, that has nothing to do with appreciation. Um, and so total for sale inventory in the month of April is up to 480. Um, keep in mind, you know, that comes across like, you know, they sell about 53,000 uh, homes a month. That's their sales pace. That's about a 9.1 month supply. It sounds a little, like a lot, but only 98,000 of those 480,000 homes are completed and you can't leave live in, in, on a piece of dirt. Um, so the actual month supply that you or I can move in uh, at any point is only 1.85 months. So, you know, not a good month, uh, you know, for builders. But keep in mind, April, when people have been signing these contracts, rates were actually, you know, a little bit higher, closer to 7.5. So it wasn't really stimulating people to go out there and, uh, you know, buy a new house. Uh, next thing we got, uh, so we had the, we got the fed minutes yesterday and we had a bunch of fed speakers over the last week. So the first thing, the fed minutes, keep in mind, this was their May 1st meeting. And since then we've had better inflation data, that CPI report last week, um, and some unemployment, some employment weakness, things like that. So, you know, the minutes are based on what they thought at that point. Um, the markets freaked out a little bit. Uh, there was talk about maybe, you know, at that point they talked about maybe raising again. Um, they talked about inflation being sticky, but again, things have changed just in those, you know, 20 something days. And, you know, um, one thing they did say in those minutes was that, you know, broad inflation was, you know, basically inflation was across the board, everything. And that's something I wanted to challenge. So this is, you know, the CPI, the year over year percent change uh, for the CPI inflation from January 2020 to April 2024. Other, you can see how this is other. This is everything except for the blue, which is car insurance, and except for shelter costs. Other, we've done really well on other. If it was just other, if you took all that other stuff out, inflation's only running at about 0.27% uh, a year, which is a really low number. But the two things that are all this insurance, or all the inflation basically, is this orange shelter costs and this 
uh, blue insurance costs. Insurance costs have been continuing to go up. Um, that's obviously caused issues. And we know about the shelter costs. We know about the cost of rent. We know some lag in that. So it's just interesting that they say inflation was across the board and everything broad-based when really it's just two things. It's shelter and it's car insurance. Um, so we took those two things away. Everything else would be looking great as far as the, the, the inflation. Um, and then the second part about that, a bunch of Fed speakers uh, over this last week, and that is also something that kind of like, you know, they, they were worried about inflation in those minutes, but since and talking about maybe we're going to have to raise again. But the speakers over the last week have basically said they, 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 they won't have to. So kind of like counteracts each other. Um, one thing one of the speakers, uh, Governor Waller, uh, you know, voting member Waller said the other day was that, um, you know, really he, he did he did point out that you know, employment and an unemployment going up is really where we would see, you know, maybe them, you know, switch up and, and cut rates a little bit sooner. So that's something we've talked about. Fed's paying really close attention to inflation and jobs. Inflation is staying where it's at. Our, our one thing that, you know, could help us out there would be if um, the job market starts to show some weakness. Speaking of, uh, job claims came out today at 215,000 uh, new initial claim, uh, jobless claims. 220,000 were expected. Still really low numbers. And this is actually the sample week that they're going to use and put into the math when they do the BLS jobs report at the beginning of June. So the fact that this came in a little bit lower than expected, that doesn't necessarily bode well um, for the jobs report coming up in a couple weeks. So have to keep an eye on that. Fingers crossed that you know goes in our favor. Um, average 30 year, where does that leave us? Last Thursday, we had dropped below seven to 6.99. Uh, between you know the Fed minutes, uh, there's been some stronger economic uh, um, data that came out today. Just some you know technical stuff as far as you know some sellback after that rally. You know we jumped to 7.17, so going the wrong direction. Um, but you know next Friday is our next chance to make some big gains. Um, that would be the PCE uh, inflation report. So that's the Fed's favorite form, especially uh, the core inflation on that PCE number. That comes in lower than expected. That is, you know, market will react positively to that. Uh, the week after that, it looks like we're going to get the BLS jobs report. You know, we just talked about that. So really these inflation and jobs reports, these unemployment claims, um, that's what we got to keep an eye on. That's when we're going to get our best, um, you know, chance to have a raise come down a little bit. But like we keep talking about, rates coming down doesn't necessarily mean it's easier to buy. If you're a buyer out there looking, um, rates coming down probably means a lot more buyers jumping into the market. A lot of you guys sitting on the sidelines saying, hey, I don't want to buy until rates come down. All of a sudden, you guys flood the market. And even though you have lower rates, you're actually paying more for the house, getting no solar concessions, things like that. So um, hope everybody has a great holiday weekend, uh, Memorial Day. Remember why we celebrate, you know, this weekend. It's not just about barbecues and stuff, but, you know, to, to um, you know, our soldiers that lost their lives. And, um, you know, if anybody needs anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great week, everybody.